good afternoon. We're here this afternoon, September 25th, 1998. We're at the Morse Institute Library in Natick, Massachusetts, continuing our Veterans Oral History interviews. We have the pleasure this afternoon of interviewing Carolyn L. McEachern. Good afternoon, Carolyn. Good afternoon. Thank you for coming. Let's ask a few questions and get a little background about you. Um, could I ask your age? I'm 78. 78 years old. Mm -hmm. Okay. And no, 87. You're 87. Yeah, that's good. 87. 87, I mean. My goodness. Well, and what is your address? In, in Natick. Natick. And how long have you lived there? I've lived there since 1950. Mm-hmm. And it's my understanding you are a widow? Yes, I am. And your husband's name was? Charles Joseph McEachran. And where were you born? I was born in Hartford, Connecticut, mm -hmm. June 4th, 1911, and I had a twin brother. You did, and what was his name? Curtis, and he died about eight years ago. And was he your only brother or sister? No, I had a sister seven years younger, and she was in the Army. Your sister was in the Army? Army for 20 years. She was a dietitian. Really? And, um, in the Korean War. Well, we'll talk about that in a few minutes. You moved to Natick in 1950. Where, were you raised in the Connecticut area? I was raised in Connecticut. I was, went to school in West Virginia, and I r had more education in Massachusetts. I see. And when you moved to Natick in 1950, at that point in time, were you married? Yes. And what made you decide to move to Natick? Well, we both lived in Wellesley, and Wellesley was a little beyond our men, uh, money. So we decided we'd have to look somewhere else, and I moved to, we moved to Natick, and I love it very much. And you've been here since 1950. Yeah. Uh, what was your family background? You mentioned you had a, a twin brother, a twin brother Curtis. Curtis, and mm -hmm. a, a younger sister, Barbara. And she and was my, in the Army, you Army, said? Yes, as a dietitian in the Korean War for 20 years. And was she stationed overseas? Yes, she was in Japan for two years. And is she living around here? She died. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Didn't realize that. And your parents, um, were you raised by both parents? No, my mother. Your mother. And she was a single parent raising three children. Yes. Did she work out of the home? Yes, she was a bookkeeper. When and where did you enter this military? I had lived in Wellesley, and I'd heard a lot about it because, of course, uh, the president of Wellesley College was the head of the Navy, and I also had a friend who was in the First Naval District, so I, Navy is what I wanted. And in, in living in Wellesley, do you know the name of the person from Wellesley College at that time? Miss McAfee. McAfee. Mm -hmm. And she was the head of, of the, the naval women. Women in the, in the Navy. And how old were you when you were considering this? I was 32. Now, what had you done prior to that time? I worked in an office. In the for, Wellesley area? In Boston mm -hmm. for 13 years. And then an, another girl and I decided we'd like to find out about the Navy. And we went to the first naval district. And that's where my friend was stationed. And so we decided that we had to take the application home and bring it back. And when my mother saw it, she said she was, she was young enough to be in it. Really? Yeah. And my brother wasn't too well, and he, he wasn't accepted. And I felt very badly about it. And I so asked him if he minded if I did. He said, no, one of us has got to go. And this was at what period of time? In, in, was it in the 1940s? Yeah, 1942. And your girlfriend, you said, also joined? Yes. Uh, we went down. She didn't get it go until later. And she was also single at that time? Yeah, we were both working. Mm -hmm. So you were she joining. She was younger. And, and it, was it called the Woman's Branch of the Navy? What was, it was the called the Waves. The Waves. Where did you have a basic training? Well, we went in so early that there wasn't any boot camp. So each 
girl went to where she was going to get her training for the job, and I went to yeoman school in Stillwater, Oklahoma. And explain exactly what yeoman means. Yeoman means an office worker, do the work, office work of the Navy. In Oklahoma, had you ever been to that area of no, the country? No. What was it like leaving in your early 30s at that age? Well, it was really kind of exciting because we all, there were nine of us left Boston at once, and my ticket was different from the other eight, so I had to go part of the way by myself and meet them later. Do you know why the, that happened? Just, I don't know. Just I a fluke know. on the train? Was it by train? Yes. Mm -hmm. And then we, we went to, all the way by train. And it was, it was fun. It was different. We were on, on a military train. Mm-hmm. Now, were you, two days. were you chosen to join up with the yeoman school because of some specialties, or did you choose it no, yourself? No, we, we, well, I chose, well, I was an office worker, so. So that was the natural progression the of the, the girls, some girls went to storekeeper school, did the, like, the payroll type of work, and some went to radio school. There were three different schools, but no boot camp at that time. Now you're on this military train, so I'm assuming you were on the train with uh, a lot of people and a lot of men. Yeah, and they had the between the two sets, they had the doors locked. <laughs> they did. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you could never, you didn't integrate with the others. No, it was separate. We didn't even see them. And then in uh, Arkansas, we got off and we ate someplace, mm -hmm. and it took a long time for the whole trip because we kept we putting aside for through trains. And we'd have to go on a side track and wait a little longer. Mm -hmm. It was did, a long ride. Did you get a sense at that time or later on that there was a little bit of animosity towards women waves from the men in the military? Not at that time. Not no. at that time. No. Uh, well, when you will find out what I did, you'll find that I did know. Okay. So you reached Oklahoma and you were part of a unit. Yes, we time? went to a and m school in Stillwater College, and we lived in the barracks. And there were also a thousand soldiers uh, in that town being trained for radar, which was a secret word at that time. And then there were 750 of us and an in-between count of Navy people. So it was, and the town was wonderful. It's a real, it was a real small town. We got the best treatment. So they, they, they opened the town up to you? They did everything. You, if, when you went to church on Sunday, there'd be somebody outside waiting to invite you for Sunday dinner. Really? You know, it was really, it was a, a very nice town. Now going out there with your group, were, had you befriended any specific women at that oh, time? Oh yes, one of my best friends came from Minnesota. She got on in Chicago, and from then on we were friends as long as we're still friends. That's so wonderful. What a nice story. And I was her maid of honor. She got married in San Francisco. Really? It was a Navy wedding, and I was asked to be the, her maid of honor, her friend to be there. So it's her. almost almost a 50-year relationship with her. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. That's nice. Um, so tell us a little more about what transpired once you got there and you were um, in yeoman school for how long? Well, it was supposed to be a four-month course, but we went. I went for two and a half because in spite of being an office worker, I didn't type. So they thought if I stayed longer, I'd learn more about typing. It was the best thing that could have happened to me. It changed my whole job, and I had a good job, interesting job. And tell us about that. I was, we went, four of us were sent to Detroit, Michigan to recruit. They didn't have a recruit uh, specialty at that time. And this and was specifically to the waves, to recruit to for waves, the waves? Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was a, we were there 18 months, and that was a very busy time and interesting. I mean, all of a sudden you had to go off and make a speech, whether you'd ever made a speech before or not, even if it turned out to be a dancing class of little girls, <laughs> which wouldn't make much difference. Sure. But I didn't know what I was going to do, I had never made a big speech before. But I soon learned, and we did a lot of public relations in the, in the city. In Michigan, they were very nice to us. And we traveled Ohio and Michigan, part of Ohio and all of Michigan. 
and we went with a male recruiter usually each time, and they were people that were locally there, and they were just staying long enough before somebody learned their job and they had to go off. Do you remember any key points that you had to put across at each speech? Yes, you had, you had to be very careful because mothers and fathers were very particular. And we couldn't, if you smoked, you couldn't smoke in the office. And uh, you had to be, reassure them that everybody that joined the service wasn't a bad person. Right. And they were very fussy about that. And uh, you really had to put it across that it was a, a fine thing to do, which it was. I never changed my mind about that. Mm -hmm. And uh, we met all kinds of people. But we did very well. So after 18 months of recruiting in the Detroit area, yeah. then what happened? Well, then they said that they had recruiters now and that we, ha we had done such a good job, we could choose which way we wanted to go. Well, I'd never been west. So I went to California, to San Francisco. And that was very great. I loved it. And how long were you in California? A year. It all added up to three years, whatever. And I was there VJ Day. It was wild. Was it? Wild. I, it was so exciting, scary a little bit. Now explain to those who may yeah. not know their history what VJ Day was. VJ Day was the day that uh, the Pacific part of the war was declared over. And of course, in, most of the service people in De Detroit, I mean in San Francisco, were a Navy. So all the things that went wrong, after all it was over, we could, had, couldn't do anything, we'd go to work for two weeks. <laughs> couldn't go anywhere or have anybody come. But uh, we, you know, we wore our uniforms all the time I was in the service. And, of course, we always had a hat when we were outside, so they told us not to take our hats because they were being grabbed off. Thank you. Would you like a little more water yes, while we're speaking? Yes, I think I would. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. But it was very exciting. So you, tell us about your uniforms. I think they were the best looking uniforms of the women in the service. They were beautifully made, very well tailored, and very elegant material. Mm -hmm. And uh, they were designed by a, um, somebody in France, high stylist. I used to know the name, but I've forgotten now. And they were very comfortable. And you always felt whatever you wore, you were perfectly dressed. All you needed was a clean suit and a clean shirt, and you were dressed up or down, whichever it happened to be. And did you have, for instance, dress blues and? Yeah, we had dress blues and white uniforms, which were pretty too, but mine had a terrible life because I didn't wear it, you know, in San Francisco because it was cool. We wore, I, all the time I was there, except a couple of days, I wore my winter uniform. And the white one, when I finally got it, I didn't get one for a while. Every time you wore it, you had to have it cleaned. And I had it cleaned once and it got lost, so that stopped me wearing it for a while. And then I came home on leave one time for 10 days, and we went to uh, the um, symphony, and it was blackout. So we went on the train because my cousin didn't have a, want to spend the money getting into Boston uh, on anything but gas. But we, did, we went on the train. And the, the bl a blackout came just as we got to the station, Back Bay Station. So we had to sit there and wait until the lights were on again. And we got to, it was Pop's concert. We went to to it to see it, and my suit was no longer clean. Sure. But I felt quite elegant in it. Now, a blackout would happen because of the possibility of an attack? Yeah, in Boston, it was the blackout was, was um, in fact, I was an air raid warden when they had them. And that was what, at the same time, they were still blacking out because of, weren't sure if any planes were going to come this far. So if someone was driving on the city streets of Boston during a blackout, would they pull over and well, shut their lights to, off? Yeah, it, unless they were crazy enough to drive without them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And but, was it mandatory to shut the lights off? Yes, you no know, light was supposed to show. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it was kind of fun doing something even then. <laughs> but I used to, on my own street in Wellesley is what I was an air raid warden. 
Before we get back to the air raid warden, yeah. um, how long did a normal blackout last? You couldn't tell. Mm -hmm. It might last a, a couple of hours. Um, that long? Yeah, you know, enough time so you could walk in the street and be sure everybody had this windows blacked off. Mm -hmm. Now, you were an air raid warden prior to joining the waves? Yeah, but that was just something you volunteered for, you know. And so if there was, was there an alarm system, a whistle? Well, well, one thing did happen to me once. You were supposed to notify somebody if you weren't going to be around. And I went to the movies, and I was sure there wouldn't be one. And it, there was one while I was there. So nobody knew I wasn't around, but I wasn't. But I was very much ashamed after it was over. Sure. I thought I... And where I worked then, in the insurance company I worked in at that time, uh, I was an air raid warden there, too. And what insurance company was that? Uh, New England, the New, the New England. The New England. It used England. to be New England Mutual Life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you worked in New... First I worked in a paper company, then I went in the service, and then I worked in the, you know, the insurance company. So prior... In earlier discussion, you mentioned that you did have some animosity felt by some of the servicemen in later years. Tell us oh, about yes. that. Well, one thing, when I was in San Francisco, two of us got sent to, there was a chief who was, had been in the Navy for, what, 30 years or so, and he just didn't like women in the service. He thought it was foolish. But the two of us, he showed us about a lithograph machine, which I thought was a lot of fun, and took us to see some a factory where there was a whole lot of that done. And he got to like us, so he didn't mind so much that we were women. When he realized? When he realized that it, it, it didn't threaten his job any. Sure, sure. Yeah. But, well, a lot of people, I don't know what they thought we did any different than when we lived at home. but. They weren't sure your behavior was going to be anything they'd be very proud of, mm -hmm. which was ridiculous. We were the same people. We just went on another job. And when living in San Francisco, were you living in, off, off site or on, in no, a barracks? No, there, when I was in Michigan, I was off site. Mm -hmm. But in San Francisco, we had a wonderful barracks. It had been a woman's club. It was like a hotel. And uh, they, the Navy took it over, or the Navy was offered it. So it was really nice, and I, well, we had a room, there were six of us that had a room in, the, in it that was like a, just a two-people room, but we had three double deck monks in it, and we all lived together in the same room. We had our own bathroom, which was pretty good for six instead of, you know, a whole lot for a whole lot more. Sure. But uh, that was very satisfactory, and I was the oldest one, and there was another girl that was about, Ten years younger than me, I guess, and then the others were just twenty-one when they had their twenty-first birthday there. So were you sort of the we, mother image? Yeah, no, in really. Some but ways? we all got along just great, and we all worked in a different place. Some of us worked all night, and so you had to be able to sleep any way you could because there was a constant was, cycle of activity. And everybody had to take turns at being captain of the room, being sure it would bear inspection and everything. And that was awful, because when you were captain, you were horrid. <laughs> and then when it was over, you thought, oh, not for five more weeks. <laughs> so the captain of the room made sure things were neat. Yeah. Oh, and discipline. Yeah. yeah. But it was fun. Yeah. Now, you mentioned you were there during VJ Day. T tell us what you remember about that. Well, in the first place, I, somebody was coming over from o Oakland, which isn't too far from San Francisco. We were going out to dinner. and. He had to walk all the way because there was no public transportation. Everything stopped. And then when we he got over there, we wanted to go eat. We couldn't eat any place because all the restaurants were jammed with people. So we went to a movie just like it would be in a private, in a small town. And then we got back and found out how everything was. And I worked in the ferry building, which is on the water, and we walked up from there, and that was fun because everybody was just shouting and clapping and they were so happy. But after that, it got so rough that you really had to be careful. Because of some excessive Excuse drinking, me. or do you think because everyone no, was just, just so, so excited? excited? They threw people in fountains. And <laughs> 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 yeah. 
You didn't get thrown in the fountain, I would hope. No, I didn't. I was well protected. <laughs> Good, yeah. But it was a, uh, but it was, it was scary. But it was so happy. Everybody was so happy that it wasn't. It was weird. Mm -hmm. And they, the, I don't know if you've ever been to San Francisco, but you know Market Street, how wide it is. Yes. They built fires in the street. Bonfires. Bonfires in the street. In celebration yeah. of the uh, the victory. And then when you go along, and some there's fountains in front of some of the buildings. That's where they threw people in. Mm -hmm. Thinking back on. Um, all of that. What were some of your challenges that you you found that you had to overcome through your three year period? Well, you know, I noticed one of the questions was, were you any time that it wasn't good? I was so interested in it, and so I had s such a lot of nice friends, and I liked my job, and I can't think of anything that was really awful. The thing that I missed most was. Sunday night supper at home because that was a night you chose anybody had whatever they wanted, and I I missed that. But really, it was it was such an interesting experience. Sure. But I knew some people that weren't a bit happy. Do you think because of homesickness? Yeah, home I think sickness? partly and partly because I was I was older and I had been on my own anyway. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know, and they didn't know how to handle it. But the girl that, that was my very best friend there, that came to San Francisco, when she her before she came, she asked me to meet her fiance. He was coming first, and then there was a place where you could go dancing, and it was all military people. And I wasn't too. I don't know. I didn't think it was anything bad to go to USO. You had good things to eat, and you had a lot of things to do, and you met a lot of nice people. So I think it just depended on the individual, how they were before they started. Sure. If they were too young, maybe they shouldn't have been there. But there were everything, lots of good things. Some people really had a hard time. Now you also mentioned that your husband was in the Army. Yes. Um, how long was he in the Army for? Do you remember? Well, the same time I was. I didn't know him until after I got out. Mm -hmm. And uh, I knew his sister-in-law because she was a wave. And we thought in Wellesley we'd get a group of women together. Well, it wasn't that easy. Either they didn't want to or there weren't that many. But I kept in touch with her, and I met my husband through her. Through, your, through his sister-in-law. Yeah. And you mentioned your closest friend. Are, are, do you want to mention her name on tape? Well, I'll tell you, uh, she, she has died. I, I understand. I should have said that. Mm -hmm. No, because I don't know if anybody would know her. Mm -hmm. she's and you kept there. in contact all these all years. All these years. And all the six of us that lived together in San Francisco have been friends ever since. And one of those women has died. And we, we had a reunion in my house, oh, about five years ago. And it was wonderful, the six of us. And it was such an assortment of backgrounds and age. Tell us about some of the backgrounds. Well. Some of them didn't live any kind of a life that I lived. I mean, I was grown up, and some of them weren't that grown up when they went in. And, uh, but we all liked, we all kept care of each other. If anything happened, there was one, somebody was there to, to, if you were upset about something, somebody was there to comfort you. It was amazing. Every time I think of it, I think, how could six people, as different as we all were, have such a good time together? Do you feel that it was also more um, acceptable to take care of each other because you were women rather than men in the same situation? We didn't do the same things for in our leisure, t leisure time. Mm -hmm. I mean, like I, I worked in the fleet post office at one time, and it had hours at three different times I had to go, different weeks at a time. And so a lot of time I didn't have anything to do. Well, one time, it was a beautiful, beautiful day, and I, I took a, a walk across the Golden Gate Bridge. There was a place you can walk, and then took a bus, bus back because I didn't have anybody to do anything with. Well, I don't think any of those girls were old enough to think of something like that. Mm -hmm. They all came from, oh, family background was about the same, but. You know, some people think one way and some another. Tell us about a typical day in San Francisco for you. What time of day would it start? Well, 
it would start at, uh, if at one time when I had three different things, it would start, first I'd go from uh, uh, night, I'd be all night, like 11 o'clock I'd go and work all night. And what would you do typically? Well, I did a lot of different things. I uh, worked at one of the things I did, it wasn't very important really when you think of it, it but it was, I redirected mail to the people. We had a, a list of, of the whole, whole, all the men and people who were in the arm, in the Navy, and we redirected their mail at one time. And uh, that was one of the jobs I did in the post office. Then the other was when I worked on the lithograph machine, which I thought, boy, I'm going to be that when I do it again, <laughs> which was fun. I think bo office work can be so boring. And this wasn't? No, it was fun. And uh, I, we'd have, well, if I went working at night, we had a very nice dining room in the, in the hotel, the woman's barracks, and it, good food, but you had to eat, sometimes you had to eat your breakfast at night and your dinner in the morning, because that's, they didn't change any, just because you had different hours. And that was kind of hard sometimes. Another thing that I'd do sometimes at, at Christmas time, I was there, I would go to the USO and, and help rack, wrap up presents that the men wanted to give. Mm -hmm. The USOs, I thought, were really interesting. And it was fun. There was always something to do. And helpful and to the... to do it, yeah. Mm -hmm. But I enjoyed building up packages for them. And it, it met people, it's such an assortment of people in all ages. Mm -hmm. And I really don't think there was anything bad in my three, about my three years. So you met a lot of people from diverse backgrounds yeah, yeah. And, and areas you didn't of the know. country. Everybody started out the same. Everybody wore the same clothes, same style clothes. So you had no, no level. You couldn't say, well, gee, I wish I had that many clothes that somebody else has, or why did they wear those awful things? Because you all wore the same. Now, yeah. were there ever any alerts there that were a little bit distressing or, or worrisome that well, you remember? Well, I used to worry a lot about it because you did hear what was going on. Oh, and another nice thing about San Francisco, I had two cousins that I was very fond of that were both in the Navy. One of them was a doctor, and they put him on a cargo ship. He never knew why. But the, the other one was a flyer, a Navy flyer. And they both came to San Francisco, and I had a chance to see both of them. And it was so nice to think that we were the same place. So far I, away I from home. I knew my cousins very well. Mm. And, um, yeah. And, and I, these were two favorite ones I liked. I said, how can I be that lucky? And then that friend of mine that was in the Naval Station, he was a captain, and he came and took me out to dinner. And when we came out, everybody said, look, captain, captain, because <laughs> we were all non-commissioned. Sure. But right. so lots of nice things happened. That's nice. And then after three years, when you were winding down, what, what were you feeling about well, I'll tell finishing you, up? It was very strange because they said after you were in just so long, you earned some, a certain number of points. Mm -hmm. And I was old enough, so I earned those points. And, and, ta and ta that, that comment has been made by other veterans. Tell yeah. us about the points and what, what well, the how earnings were. How long you'd been then mm -hmm. and what you'd done. And the thing was, in your age. And you know, after reaching a certain amount of points, they would consider you could get out. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I hadn't been home for Christmas for three years, and I thought I wanted to get out, but I thought I had to. Was it, uh, one directive was wrong. It made you feel that you had no choice. So I planned to go home, but when I found out I could have stayed longer, I uh, had made my plan, so I just went ahead and went home. And did you go home by train? Yeah. We took a train uh, to Chicago. And when we got to Chicago, we had to take another train to go to Massachusetts and to the New England area. And it was a terrible snowstorm. And we got on the when one They only had one car for people to go on. And they t filled it so full that we sat three in the seat, two on the floor, three in the seat. And it, it took a long time to get home. And every time we saw anybody near the door, when we stopped, there would be any box lunches somewhere. So somebody would get a whole bunch of box lunches for everybody and pass it down the car. So there was a lot of camaraderie. Oh yes, I mean you were, 
he, we couldn't be very far from each other because two, three in the seat. Mm -hmm. And uh, then I went to New York to be discharged. I don't know why. I was discharged in New York. And I had a cousin who lived there, a woman cousin, and she came over and they had some sort of a ceremony, but I can't even remember it now. And I don't know why. But then I, she was, I was very fond of her too. She was my oldest cousin. And uh, I didn't have any, any special clothes to wear. I gave all my clothes away when I went in. And I was glad because then I started out fresh again. And they gave me, I got $200 towards getting some clothes. And that went pretty far now, that sure. day. Did you buy them in New York? Yes, mm -hmm. yeah. And I liked going to New York. I used to go a lot. And then I went home. And what was it like coming home? Dull. Was dull, it? awfully dull. And, and I, I wanted to talk about it so much. And you know, you know, after a while, they say, oh gosh, not again. But I thought, uh, I just thought it was awful. And then I met when my sister-in-law and I met Charlie, and we were married in six months. After you and met I, him, within six months you got married. Was I ever lucky? I'd just been waiting for him, I know it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And you met he, him it, in Massachusetts? Yeah. Well, he lived in, he, he worked in Wellesley, so he was living with his aunt. And what was he doing in Wellesley? He was working for a, a nursery. He liked uh, agricultural things, plants and everything. And uh, so he lived there. And did you go back to work also? Oh, yes. Yeah. And what did you do in Boston? Well, I went back to, that was when I went to the insurance, insurance company. Insurance company. And I worked there 27 years. I've worked a lot of years. 27 years with the same company? Yep. And how old were you when you retired? Well, let's see. 20, 32, 33, 34, 35. You were, it was? I had three years. I was 32. No, I'm sorry, that you retired from the insurance oh, well, company. Oh, I company? retired at 62. At 62. Yeah. And what have you been doing since? Well, I always thought when I retired I'd like to um, do some voluntary work in the hospital. But before I had a chance to do anything about that, I, uh, one of my neighbors, who was an older woman, you know, sometimes they're older than me, <laughs> and uh, she got me interested in the women's club. And I thought, no, oh, I don't think I really want to go because I've seen an awful lot of women. So I thought I wouldn't bother, would go. but I went, and I'll tell you now, I've met some of the nicest people I've ever known. Through the women's the club? Women's club. Natick women's yeah. club. And you're an officer of that club? Uh, no, I'm on the uh, board. On their board. Well, I've been in it for quite a number of years now. You said you also had tried and, with... And the, I went in the blood re American Red Cross blood program, mm -hmm. I did that. And now, I, have you heard of the Open Door? Yes. Uh, Can you explain that. what that is? Yes, that's a, a thing for people that, it, everybody thought it was because if you didn't have enough money to go out to eat, you could go out to eat once in a while. It isn't that, it isn't that at all. It's just people that, like, that live alone and would like to see somebody else, people in nursing homes that have to be taken there, and uh, anybody that wants to, really. And they meet once a week? Once every Thursday. At a local church? Yeah, St. Paul. And have dinner there, and it's dinner that volunteers cook, correct? Yeah, yes, uh, well, it's all, and gifts, we get, a lot of people are very generous. Natick is a generous town, very nice town that way. And uh, what we might have to, we might, might have to give it up because the people that started you know, are a lot older, and me, I can't do anything anymore, really important, and uh, I'm not the only one. So I'm not sure, we hope we, we're going to try to open it in October. Now you had stated earlier that you had, with a group, tried to get a group of waves together when you were... Oh, when we were in Wells, it went yeah. before I got married. But we just thought it'd be fun. And th that was when men didn't like women in the service. All those nuts that go to American Legion and stuff, they didn't really want us. We tried it and it didn't work, so we thought, oh, the heck with it, we don't care. So we never got together any other way. Mm -hmm. But there was uh, Marines and, and Wax and Waves. Now, have, has your organization been honored 
Uh, I know there has been some controversy over the years about certain women. Well, well they have that uh, wonderful memorial in Washington. In Washington. Have you seen no, it? No, I haven't. Mm -hmm. And uh, But I met uh, this summer the woman that's in charge of that. She's an ex-general. Uh, and uh, she came to Framingham, and we we heard about it and everything. And, and um, it was very nice. I went to that. But I don't really have much... I did belong to VFW. My husband and his brothers and some others started a post in Wellesley, which is now defunct. And uh, I went to that, but I was, I, it always made me mad that I had to be in the auxiliary, you know? Sure. <laughs> Not mad, really, but you, I always thought that was awful that I couldn't. But they didn't take anybody if you hadn't been out of the country. I see. Which was all right, that's their choice. Sure. But that, I, I stopped that. And your husband was in the army for three years. Was he? Did he see combat duty? Oh yeah. And where was yeah. he? He was in Europe, and in, uh, in some of the awful spot of it. Yeah, he had a really kind of a hard time. He never talked an awful lot about it, but um, he he really did have a hard time in the army. I mean, they had saw a lot of action. Mm -hmm. He ran rode in a half truck. I don't know what you call, they called it. And they went all over Germany, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, but he, they were he, a lot of his friends. They had a nice VFW uh, group. But then, as the years went, the younger people didn't care about joining. In so, Wellesley, you yeah, mean? In Wellesley, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, looking back, what were some of your most memorable experiences or memorable characters that you had met when you were in the waves? Well, for one thing. I, when I went from Michigan to San Francisco, I went alone, because that's where I chose to go. And w at that time, the, the bridge didn't go so, from Oakland to things, so you had to take a ferry. So I got on the ferry, it was just about getting oh, beyond supper time, all alone, and I didn't know where I was going or anything. I didn't know what was, how I was going to be met. Or any, and when I got there, there was a man, and he s saw me get off, and he was in uniform. And he asked my name, and he said, you're going to the barracks, aren't you? And I said, I think so. I suppose so. And he said, well, I'm commissioned to take you. And the, but we went along. He was a very pleasant man. And he said to me, have you had any, any supper? I said, no, the last three days on the train, the food ran out, and we got f fed scrambled eggs, and nobody got it but non-commissioned people. <laughs> and uh, so I, I really hadn't had much to eat. And he said, well, why don't we stop and get some dinner? Uh, which I thought it was so nice of him. And he was very pleasant. I, can't, I, don't, I knew his name then, but I never saw him again after he took me to the barracks. He took me there and showed me where to go and everything. And that's how I got welcomed to San Francisco. That's wonderful. And when we first went there, we had to, they hadn't got all the rooms set up. See, I went early in the service it was a, when the waves went. And we are all in a room, 40 of us in one room you know, bun uh, cots all around the room. And uh, for about two months, we had to sleep there. But then we got shifted. You know, and then oh, a lot of things, like when we went from uh, S Stillwater to Michigan, we didn't know where we were going to stay because they had no accommodation for women in Detroit. And we met a doctor and his wife, and he became very much interested in us, and he got us his wife belonged to a woman's club that was very elegant. And uh, they had uh, room for two of us. And a couple of went to the hotel. But two of us decided we'd like to stay there. And it was fun because it was a pretty, pretty place. And while we were there, Lily Ponce came to sing. It was came to sing in Detroit, but she stayed at the club. And she so, was a, a nationally national, known, known singer, right? Singer, yeah. P-O-N-S? Yeah, she was, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She was an opera singer. Mm -hmm. And oh, so charming. And uh, they had an open house for her. And we got invited. And my mother had come to see me there in, in Detroit. And we went. And she was so darling. When we, this little small woman, when we got to her, she had somebody on the other side who asked me my name and then told her. And then she said, How do you, Yeoman Lowe? And how do you do, Mrs. Lowe? I mean, you know, it was very elegant. She was lovely. And Lo was your maiden name, yeah. L-O-W. Yeah. Mm. 
And we, that made what was fun. It was exciting. Yeah, How you've are. you've sort of alluded to the fact that this was a very positive experience for you, but. How important do you feel it was? Oh, I for think you? it. I think it was the three of the, of the one of some of the most interesting years of my life, mm -hmm. and uh, I really think it was something to be part of. I'm, I'm very patriotic. Mm -hmm. I'm very proud of having done it, and it's good. And I just liked it. And how? How? What's your overall feeling regarding the, the whole war effort during well, that period of time? I feel. I can't understand why people were so disagreeable to the veterans from Vietnam. Uh, my brother-in-law was had to go to Vietnam, and uh, I thought it was awful the experience that they had. I can't see why anybody, why, would take it out on them. Why would they think it was? Mm -hmm. If they didn't agree with the war, that was all right. But why should the people that had to go be in trouble about it? Mm -hmm. And I think it made it very hard for a lot of people. And then you hardly heard anything about uh, the Korean War. And one of the most famous generals in that was, um, uh, he was a prisoner of war. And he finally got out when he was in Japan. And my sister, being a dietitian in the hospital there, she, in military hospital, she carried his dinner into him. And I mean, that was very important to her. Mm -hmm. And she tripped. And dropped the tray, <laughs> and he—he he was so good. He, oh, he felt so bad for her, and but he was so nice to her. And then they had a big uh, thing for him in New York State, New York City, and they—he was sure that she was invited. Isn't that I mean, nice? You know, did she have any other stories to tell about oh, her yes, experiences? She had a lot, yeah. Difficult? Not uh, yes. Well, one thing when she came home. Uh, she her, she had a lot of things that she had were her personal belongings. They went in another ship, and when they were getting ready to go home, that ship was was uh, sunk right in the harbor there in Tokyo Bay, and all her things were gone. And of course, she saw a lot of people because she did all hospital work. Sure. But she uh, she met her husband in El Paso. He was in the army. He was in uh, two years more than she was. Mm -hmm. But. Uh, she, she well, a lot, saw much, a lot more of that action. See, I didn't really see anything like that. Right. I mean, I worried about everything, <laughs> mm -hmm. but I didn't see it. Are there any individual thoughts or memories that you would like to share with certain members of the community or people who will be observing this tape in the future as we leave this interview today? I don't know. I, I, some people, I don't know, no, I can't think of any, because I don't see my close friends that were in the service very often, and uh, I try not to talk about it too much because I don't want to bore everybody. It was very exciting information to But I, I, uh, I'm always pleased when somebody thinks it's interesting, but I don't say much anymore. It's a long time now. But you've lived a long life. Yeah, yeah. and uh, done a lot of different things. Mm -hmm. I, when I went to school, it was prep school that I went to in West Virginia. My brother went in Maryland, so we were about 30 miles apart. Mm -hmm. And my aunt was school nurse at his school. Mm -hmm. uh, my aunt was very helpful in bringing us up to. And my mother was so much fun. Yeah. When I worked in New England Life, they used to ask if she'd come and have dinner. She was a nurse. She'd come and have lunch with me. And uh, usually when any of us had lunch with with a, a guest, everybody went a separate way. They, every time they was my mother, they'd always ask if they could join us. Because she had. Because she was fun. She was a fun person. Yeah, friendly and, and cute. And yeah. cute. Yeah. How long? How long did she live? But she was seventy-two when she passed away. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now all I have is all my close family are gone. My brother, my sister, mm -hmm. my mother, and uh, my aunt was very close. She's lived with Charlie and me for a few years. Mm -hmm. Well, we would like to thank you for this interview. It was very, very thank entertaining. You. And each interview that we've had, we've been fortunate of hearing a little bit more about not only your generation, but a different view. A different view and different information as to what occurred in your life. So yeah. we'd like to thank you again, Carol. Thank you for inviting me. Okay. It was very nice. I appreciate it. Good. Yeah.